for those who don't know me, I'm Angus Howden. I've decided to do a study on grapple feeding and cable yarding operations. So overall, the system that I've been looking at is, there we go. So extraction is done via cable yarder, both swing and tower yarders were looked at across four crews using either mechanical or motorized grapples, such as the falcon claw shown in that image or just general mechanical grapples. And I'm looking at specifically the machine on the cutover that is shoveling and feeding stems to that grapple for extraction. This, I have a short video of what the system actually looks like in practice. This is a site down in Geraldine and they were harvesting radiata that is about 36 years old and shoveling to their grapple with winch assist. And so, yeah, the operator would shovel the stems from those large bunches that you can see in the background from him and then would pass it effectively to that falcon claw, which then would then extract the stem up to the skid via Mandel 171. And these were three and a half ton average piece size trees. So that's why you're only seeing one stem being shoveled at a time. And another thing of note, yeah, the operator would sometimes grab the tree for a second time to help the yarder pull the wood up. So my study took 43 hours of actual time study time across four crews one in Omaru, one in Geraldine, one in Golden Downs, one in Nelson area, and Pigeon Valley, also in the Nelson area. My time study variables were made up of both time and non-time variables were also taken down. So I considered the shoveling and prep time or shoveling prep time to basically bring that stem from beside the lines to underneath the lines and then from that the operator would then transition to feeding so he'd actually move the boom to up to feed the grapple. I then also considered wait times where the operator was stationary and not doing anything waiting for that grapple to return. I also considered sometimes the crews would use their felling machine in this scenario to feed the grapple so I've also considered fat time spent felling, traveling back to the skid and also other shoveling where the yarder would continue cycling. However, this machine would then be away and pulling stems from further away, just bunching them before the lines. In terms of non-time variables, I took down piece size, extraction, average piece size, extraction distance and slope as well. To also get an operator's perspective, I did a general survey of them to get their opinions and how they see it fitting into their operation. So in terms of productivity and the utilization of the machines, overall per scheduled machine hour, the machine averaged 44.3 tons per scheduled machine hour, but then the utilization, average utilization was only 35%. That means the machine is either sitting idle waiting for that grapple to return or it is doing another task such as felling or shoveling from further away. This study only considers the time that is spent either shoveling from very close to the lines to the lines and then feeding the grapple in this utilization. And so delay free or per productive machine hour, you can average 142 tons. In terms of the factors that I saw influencing productivity, site layout actually became a big factor. So on the left, you can see the, this crew shoveled stems from where they were felled, and that actually took far longer than the photo on the right, which you can see in the background has a large number of trees or stems bunched right next to the lines. And so he, his utilization in that scenario was really low because he could grab one tree, put it down, and then all he'd had to do was wait until the grapple came and then he'd feed the grapple. So that's definitely a big influence on productivity. 
extraction distance, as the machine got further away from the landing, surprise, surprise, the wait time would increase and thus the cycle time overall would increase and productivity would decrease. And also pace size. While feeding the grapple definitely helps with smaller pace sizes as you can bunch the bunch stems more easily and feed three or four stems for small, small pace sizes to the grapple, that still takes time. And so, for example, again, the one on the right, averaging three and a half ton piece size. The one on the left, averaging, I believe, 1.3 ton. And so it was definitely easier for the guys working in three and a half ton piece size to shovel more efficiently because they're not trying to bunch those stems. My operator survey, I got to all four operators in all the crews I went to. Um, they found it really useful for back faces and on or over ridges that they wouldn't be able to get deflection into otherwise. It's just really handy for them to access areas that they wouldn't be able to otherwise. They also really like the increased safety that no one's outside a machine on the cutover. They don't have to use breaker outs. One crew that I talked to used breaker outs for four hours in the last three years. So it's pretty much made that not an issue for them at all. In terms of limits of the system, they're limited by slope, 30 degrees without a winch assist or 40, or yeah, 45 degrees with a winch assist in terms of average slope and extraction distance. So skyline extraction distance or winch assist rope as well. And, but even then they wouldn't try and push to that maximum extraction distance because of the general complications and they perceived that productivity would decrease at those big extraction distances. The crews really liked the reduced environmental impact that they perceived from using the system. So they liked it because they could then shovel heads to the grapple, any breakage that they could like any breakage that they could then extract and they could remain productive while doing that because they could bunch those heads into some loads were like six heads. And so that keeps your productivity going instead of if that system wasn't there, the yarder operator would then have to pick up these heads one by one. And some crews also perceived reduced roading and landing construction because they can get into areas that they otherwise wouldn't be able to get into. It means that they don't need to have other pads or other skids in other areas and that's what they've perceived as well. Future opportunities for the system with the recent changes to the NESCF now, anything longer than two meters and long end diameter of over 10 centimeters should be removed unless it's unsafe to do so on erosion prone land. So that high or extremely high ESC class. And this system, I think will really help in that scenario because you can easily bunch those heads and bunch that small, small wood, but remain productive because you can bunch them. And yeah. Overall, it was productive in a variety of situations from down in 0.5, piece size, 0 .5 ton piece size right the way up to three and a half ton. The operators that were using it generally really liked it um, just because it meant that they were safe and then reduced environmental aspect of it was really good to them. It is an additional cost. So yeah, it's easy to say, oh, just put another machine on in the skid, in the system, doesn't matter. But again, depending on the system, you could be spending easily two or $3,000 a day, depending on what sort of equipment you decide to use. And if you're on winch assist and yeah, there's definitely, it needs to be considered when you're looking to implement this. And in terms of there's possibility for increased future use, especially for those crews that want to remain productive, but also do a really good job environmentally with the new NESCF regulations. Yeah, overall, thank you very much.